Fasting is one of the greatest healers on the planet. It has been used for literally thousands of years all over the entire world, cross-culturally for spiritual reasons and health reasons alike. There are many different types of fasts, but in general, fasting refers to restricted caloric intake over a period of time. This may differ according to the individual. For some, a fast could mean only eating at certain times of the day, while others believe that the only way to fast is by drinking purified water only for a set number of days. When food is not constantly entering the digestive system, our body is able to direct itself toward regeneration. We enable the body to direct its energy toward healing, rebuilding cells, and detoxification. Periodic fasting and caloric restriction increase vitality and strength and extend the life in many animals and microbial species. In addition, fasting helps to reduce blood pressure, removes thrombi, and decreases incident of heart attack and stroke. Fasting triggers autophagy. Autophagy is the body's way of cleaning out damaged cells in order to regenerate healthier cells. Auto means self and phagi means eat. So the literal meaning of autophagy is self-eating. Although this was only recently proven in 2016 by the Dr. Yoshinori Ashumi, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work, natural health practitioners wrote about the self-healing mechanism, anti-aging benefits, and disease reversal that they observed occur when fasting their clients or patients for hundreds of years. Here is just a handful of benefits of fasting resets the metabolism, balances blood sugar, enhances digestion, balances the gut microbiome, eliminates adult onset allergies, clears the skin, reduces inflammation, which is the precursor to disease, and has been clinically proven to extend the lives of microbial species, mice, monkeys, and humans. In Ayurveda, fasting refers to cal calorie-restricted eating, coupled with the use of herbs that help to increase digestive function. There are four types of fasts that are safe to do at home on your own, and that is intermittent fasting. So that is when you eat at a certain window during the day, anywhere from two hours a day all the way till about eight hours a day, and then you're not eating for the remaining period. So two hours eating, 22 hours not eating, eight hours eating, 16 hours not eating. Um, and that helps to give your body a break and stimulates autophagy. Another m safe method of fasting at home is when you have lunch being the last meal of the day. This is an Ayurvedic practice, actually, and this is just another type of intermittent fasting. So you have the last meal of the day around 2 p.m. Then, of course, there's kitchari, which is a type of Ayurvedic soup made with legumes and lentils. That's a very safe fast for people who have what we would consider to be excess vata, and I'll get into that in a little bit. And the last type of fast is juice fasting, so where you're consuming uh, cold-pressed vegetable juices and fruit juices for a set period of time. So now let's just do some fasting considerations for the different doshic type. So here are some of the amazing benefits of fasting for kapha types and for kapha type imbalances in the body. It clears mucus, it helps to bring balanced and healthy weight to the kapha type. Kapha types can be um, larger boned, be beautifully curvaceous, and have more bulky muscles and a larger framed body. And so the fasting can help them to stimulate metabolism and just keep them at a healthy and wonderful weight for their perfect frame. It also helps to eliminate toxins from the body, stimulates metabolism, enhances digestion, clears the lymphatics, and reduces things like fibroids and tumors and think growths and masses that are all symptomatic of a kapha type imbalance in the body. Because kapha is cold and damp in the body, it is brought into balance using opposite properties. So that would be hot and stimulating herbs, dietary practices, and activities because Ayurveda uses the application of opposites to bring things into balance. So if something is hot, then we use cold. And if something's cold, we use something that's hot. 
and kapha is cold, wet, damp, and heavy. So spices are very balancing for kapha. You really cannot go wrong. All the spices are going to help them to stimulate their digestion and stimulate their metabolism. So explore spices, get familiar with them, and definitely incorporate them when you're in a fasting routine. Cardio activity. Many kapha types like to kind of chill out and stay home. They tend to be very maternal and loving, devoted, loyal, and like to kind of go at an easy pace. But the cardio activity is really balancing for their body. It helps them to maintain a healthy weight for their constitution and is really uplifting to the mind. Dry skin brushing, sweating, which both target the lymphatics in the body, and the lymphatics is an area of sensitivity and vulnerability for the kapha types. So doing these practices will help to keep them on a detoxification practice very regularly. Lastly, emotional release. A lot of kapha types tend to look behind them, backward, in the past. They can be nostalgic, melancholy, resentful even, um, have a hard time with forgiving and a hard time speaking their needs and their feelings. So for kaphas, doing regular emotional detoxification where they're focusing, if, if they're not ready for forgiveness, that's okay, but coming to peace maybe with things that have happened in the past, letting it go, being sure that they're communicating their needs and they're not building resentments. All of those things can be helpful to keeping kapha in balance in in combination with the right fasting methods. Fasting considerations for vata or people with vata type excesses. Okay, so you really need to be careful with fasting and vata type constitutions and vata type imbalances. Because vata type people tend to be underweight anyway as it is and struggle sometimes to even gain weight, you definitely don't want them to be losing a ton of weight Also, the vata type imbalances include things like weakness, um, being fragile, old age, degenerative diseases, weakness, exhaustion, and brittle bones, hair, skin, nails. And so fasting can be very lightening and be very strong for a person with a vata constitution. That said, if you put a vata type on a restricted diet that's really easy to digest that is a type of fasting method so that's when you're going to think about things like kitchari which is an ayurvedic soup made out of lentils and beans and spices or you could also just use vegetable pureed soups and just make sure that you're giving them enough fat and keeping their protein stores high as well as you know using lots of sweet fruits and teas. And that's a very nice, easy fast for a vata type that's not going to provoke any fear or anxiety or stimulate any more unnecessary weight loss. Then because vata is cold, dry, light, and mobile, it is brought into balance using the opposites again. So that would be things that were warm and nutritive, herbs, dietary practices, and activities adaptogens are really, really balancing and nourishing for vata types. Adaptogens, so if you pay attention to the word, you can see the word adapt in there. And that is because these herbs literally help the body to adapt to the chronic or constant secretion of cortisol. So if you're underneath a lot of stress or anxiety, adaptogens can be extraordinarily helpful, providing the body endurance and strength. So ashwagandha, shatavari are just a handful of adaptogenic herbs that can be very beneficial for vata. Meditation practices. Vatas, when they go out of balance, they tend toward nervousness, anxiousness, and insomnia. So making sure that they have a really grounding daily meditation practice can be very good for them. And then because of their dry, cold, sort of weak tendencies, they need a lot of nourishment, rest, self-massage, making sure that they're eating a good amount of dietary fats and staying warm. Lastly, because vata types tend to be very creative and get a lot of ideas and visions, it can be hard for them to follow their ideas through to completion. So utilizing things like life coaches, to-do lists, and calendars can be really grounding for them and give them the reward of finishing the things that they start. Fasting considerations for pitta or pitta type excesses, so like heat and inflammation in the body. Fasting actually increases digestive fire, so you feel hungry, right? 
So if pitta and heat is high already in the body, you'll want to reduce that and get that into balance before putting the pitta type on a fast. Ask anybody that has acid reflux, so burning in their stomach, what happens if they skip a meal? It's not comfortable, right? So you want to bring that into balance before you start fasting this person using no food. Okay, now we get to fasting for pitta type and pitta type imbalances. So the pitta type constitution is strong. They naturally build muscle very easily. They have strong attention to detail and focus and concentrative as well as organizational abilities. They tend to be the leaders. And so because pitta is hot, wet, sharp, and mobile, it is brought into balance by using its opposites, which are cold, calming, and drying, dietary practices, and activities. So one of the most important things for a pitta to do is to stay cool and to stay calm. And you can do that by eating lots of leafy green vegetables, cilantro, which is very cleansing for the blood. And the blood, the liver, and the small intestine tend to be hot seats for pitta-type constitutions that they need to be cognizant of all throughout the year. In general, they should avoid skipping meals that can increase pitta dosha, unless they're in balance, in which case then they can you know, do some skilled intermittent fasting. And they should also avoid using too many stimulants like coffee, as well as drinking too much alcohol and eating a lot of pungent spices that can all throw pitta into excess. Pitta types tend to be super competitive and it's the competition that can drive up that internal heat. So just, you know, enjoying activities just for their own sake, you know, swimming to swim in the water and, you know, bicycling with nowhere to go. And just for the joy of it, the ease and joy of it can be very medicinal and balancing for Pitta. As I said, Pitta types tend toward toxicity or heat related blood conditions and symptoms of those things are uh, skin irritations, rashes, acne, blisters, boils, those all kind of fall into the category of excess pitta caused by excess heat or toxicity in the blood. So for them, they really benefit from doing ongoing liver and blood detoxification practices, especially in the summer. And one way to incorporate that into your daily routine is by utilizing a category of herbs called alteratives, which are literally your blood cleansing herbs that you can, some of which you can just easily pick up from your grocery store, like from the produce section, like burdock root or dandelion greens or cilantro can all be very cleansing and easy to cook with, especially during the summer months. Pitta types tend to have a hard time letting go of control. They believe that they have to control everything. And when Pitta gets high, they can not only get a little bit controlling, but also super critical. But just understand if you're in relationship with somebody who's very Pitta dominant, that the more critical they are of other people, it's often an expression of how critical they actually are of themselves. So if you can be compassionate to them in that regard, that's actually can be helpful. Um, but yeah, so just having faith in other people's abilities, letting go of control, delegating tasks, trusting people, not feeling like you have to micromanage things can be really helpful for the pitta type personality.